Allstate fans shook up Southern California with a long-awaited outburst of good vibration. Colorado State hadn't been to a bowl game in 42 years, so it was no big surprise when Ram Pride exploded. But the fuse was lit two years ago. Please welcome and get a hat. Okay? Well, good. I like both of them. <laughs> I like both of them. In 1989, Earl Bruce came to Colorado State with hopes of turning around a program that had been dormant for years. The awakening of the football program was instantaneous. After a 1-11 record in 1987 and a 1-10 record in 1988, the Rams went 5-5-1 five, five, and one in their first season under Earl Bruce. In 1990, they aimed even higher. The first goal that they put up on the board when we were making our goals at the beginning of the season was to go to a bowl game. The 1990 season got underway with a thrilling come from behind victory at airports. It was only a hint of the great things to come. Verdugo takes a snap, drops back to pass. He throws in the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Frank Freeman. We started this year in Colorado Springs, and after that game, and I remember many of us said, we're on our way. We're on our way to something very special for this institution. The arch-rival Wyoming Cowboys came into Hughes Stadium with a perfect 9-0 record and ranked 18th in the nation. But the Ram defense believed in themselves and not the Poles. They had an answer for every Cowboy challenge. Back to pass, good protection. Steps up, goes intercepted by the Rams at the 35-yard line. Tipitonic to the 20, cuts it back. Tipitonic to the 10, 5, touchdown. The biggest play of the year. The biggest play of the year. The bronze boot was back in Fort Collins. Under the weight of a new spirit, the town began to tremble with good vibration. tough enough. To win at Hawaii is next to impossible, but this team always seemed to find a way to win. Second and goal, Jimenez back, they throw the screen pass, it's caught by Copeland, inside, dives, touchdown! The Rams lead at 28-27 with 28 seconds left. In yet another exciting late rally, the 1990 Rams finished with an 8-4 regular season record, second place in the Western Athletic Conference, an undefeated home season, and an invitation to the Freedom Bowl in Anaheim, California. When you can win in Hawaii, you can win anywhere, under any condition. Thumb knows winning. After all, he played in the last bowl game for Colorado State. It's been a long wait, but this determination to return to a bowl game has been simmering all season long. It was great when they said we were going to the Freedom Bowl. And everybody celebrated, and everybody really liked it, and things were in a turmoil, and we still are saying we're going there. But you know what today meant? We're not only going there, we're going there to win, you hear me? Sunny Southern California, an ideal setting for Freedom Bowl 7, hitting the Rams of Colorado State University against the University of Oregon Ducks. He 
it's Colorado State, their first bowl appearance since back in 1948 versus the Ducks of Oregon on an unseasonably cool evening right here in Southern California. Well, a very pleasant good evening to you, everybody. I'm Phil Stone, along with Craig James. I'll tell you one thing about the Rams of Colorado State. They're not used to these holiday parties, Craig, and they're so excited about all this, they don't even know who's going to quarterback yet. Let's go! And Tony Alford deep, along with Billy Gonzalez. And there's the kick. It comes to Alford. He's underneath it at the one-yard line on the right side, which is the near side of the field. Tony gets it across the 20, spins off one tackle, gets it up to the 25-yard line, and the Rams will have it there, first and 10. Backs are split. Third and four. Verdugo straight back to pass. He's got good protection. Throws complete to the tight end. It is caught by Linder down to the 30-yard line for a first down. Third and five. And Verdugo drops. Here comes the linebacker blitz. They pick it up. There's the throw complete to Primus at the 18-yard line and out of bounds. At the 11, flags are down. Primus was brought down by the face mask. That will move it down close to the five-yard line. All right, fourth and goal. Macronado, Yurt, and Tony Alford. And they run the option. Dimenev keeps it. He's over for a touchdown. <laughs> Going to a bowl game is more than just playing football. So ladies and gentlemen, Rotarians, please join me in a rousing welcome for the 11th winningest coach in college football, Earl Bruce. Earl, bring you up. As the anticipation builds, Oregon tries to get the upper hand early on. Earl, playing uh, Pac-10 opponents, uh, certainly nothing new for you as a head football coach. What have you told your Rams about the Oregon Ducks? Very little. <laughs> We're trying to keep that a secret until Saturday night. Uh, basically, that they're strong, they're physical, they're tough. They've got a great quarterback that throws the football. So we got to overcome all that, and I'm trying to tell our team before we keep down here how we're going to try to do that. I'm not going to tell you, who. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, no I don't take that. A day at Disneyland. And you thought that win over Wyoming was thrilling. The Colorado State University marching band gets in on the act and thrills the crowds on Main Street that night at Disneyland. That's really like speaking to coach who says my line is 30 pounds light. <laughs> Kickoff is less than 24 hours away. Some of Colorado's most influential figures huddle to formulate the game plan. Players from the Raisin Bowl of 1949 also huddled to reminisce and offer some of their gridiron wisdom. You didn't even know die right. 